the chapter that we'll be following now is chapter number two, which is knowledge and reasoning for us. Examination point of view, this is a very, very, very important chapter for us because you can expect a lot of numericals, you can expect a lot of questions on predicate logic from this particular chapter. Now, before we start this chapter, please do understand that for studying this particular chapter, you will need paper and pen or maybe a notebook or a register or whatever you are comfortable with because this part of the syllabus is not there in the study material provided to you as this involves a lot of uh, problems and it involves a lot of predicates to be learned. So the ideal way of doing this is when you see a question on the slide, you just take it down, you try and write the solution on your own and then the next slide gives you the right answer. The best way is that you try writing the predicates on your own because let's get it right. Unless you are good with predicates, you are going to struggle with the second part of the chapter. So this is more of a read and uh, sorry, this is more of a write and learn kind of thing rather than reading or just studying from the slide. Now, what exactly is this chapter all about? Now, we'll be starting with the first part of the chapter. We have tried to keep the videos as short, as compact as possible so that you can download them quickly and then you can study them easily. The first part of the chapter talks about predicate logic or what is also called as the first order logic or the first order predicate logic. We want the system to think like a human being. We want the system to have some kind of an intelligence. Now for that to happen, the system needs to have the information that we have as humans. Unless the system has that kind of information with it, it cannot even try and think like us. But if at all the system has to think like us, it needs to have the kind of knowledge or the kind of information that we possess as humans. So this part of the syllabus or this part of the chapter will actually teach you how to represent our day-to-day -day knowledge in the format which is understood by the system. And then gradually we'll see okay, how can the system use this information and then process and try and answer whatever queries you have. But that is the second part of the chapter. So let's get started. Let's try and represent information in the format which is understood by the system. Let us get started with this. Now, before we get on with the statements, let's understand the various operators that you have in predicate logic. Now, there are so many different operators that we have in predicate logic greater than less than, less than equal, greater than equal, equal and not equal. Now, please understand this. Whatever you see in red over here in the form of these brackets, these are the ones which I'm going to use as functions. Whereas if you look at these, these I'll use as operators. Now, when to use which one and what's the difference? I'll discuss it as and when we come across examples. But these are your normal mathematical operators and the meaning remains pretty much the same. Also, now, We'll be needing certain laws, which we've studied as De Morgan's laws in maybe one of the lower semesters. Now, we, we're going to use three laws over here. This is how we read it. This is not of not A is A, not of A or B is not A and not B. Not of A and B is not A or not B. So we will be using these formula wherever needed, whenever we need to make certain conversions. So at the moment, you can just list down, you can rewind the video, you can list down the operators and you can list down the operator uh, and you can list down the De Morgan's laws as well. So just this little information is enough for us to get started with predicate logic. So what do we do next? We'll take up a statement at a time and we'll try and represent it in the form of a predicate. You can see, listen, understand the first few and then say maybe the fifth statement when you see you take the question you try and write the answer on your own and then you can always cross check with whatever we have it's going to be real fun it's really nice it's really simple and it's really interesting and make sure that we make the most of this chapter in the examination we can score a lot of marks out of this particular chapter okay let's get started with the first statement marcus is a man now this is the information which we need to represent in the form of a predicate now let us analyze this over here when i look at this statement what i understand is that marcus is a proper noun we are talking of someone specific and the predicate or the information to be represent here is that marcus is a man so man is the predicate so how do i represent this in the form of a, pre a predicate logic statement so i convert it and i represent it like this now if you look at the statement this is my predicate man and this is Marcus. Marcus is a man. This is how we represent 
the information. Marcus is a man. So any proper noun would go something like this. Marcus is a man. So this is the first statement. Now gradually we are going to in, uh, increase the difficulty level or the complexity of the statements and then we keep representing it like this. This you can uh, also think of it in these terms. I don't say this is how it is but we are thinking on these lines that man is a class and Marcus is represented as an object of class man. So Marcus is a man or Marcus is an instance of class man. Marcus is an object of class man. Right? So this is something which we'll be doing for all the predicates to come, right? Let's go to the second one. Look at this one. Now, Marcus was a Pompeian. Now, again, look at the statement. Figure out, do you have any proper nouns out here? Again, yes, Marcus is a proper noun. Was a Pompeian. Now, what exactly is a Pompeian? See, uh, there's a lot of history involved over here refers to people living in Pompey another city somewhere in in Italy Europe maybe it's as simple as that for us to understand it's like I am an Indian so Indian is the predicate and then whatever name I put that becomes a proper noun so again if I want to represent Marcus was a Pompeian I need to represent Marcus as an instance of class Pompeian so how do I do it the way I had written Marcus is a man on similar lines, I'll represent Marcus as an object of class Pompeian. This is it. Now, if you look at this, Marcus is a Pompeian. So, Marcus is an instance of class Pompeian. Now, what you need to observe in this statement as compared to the previous statement is, previous statement we said Marcus is a man and this statement says Marcus was a Pompeian. Clearly, there's a difference in the tense. But unfortunately, in predicate logic, I cannot represent tenses. So whether you give the statement as Marcus is a Pompeian or Marcus was a Pompeian, my statement still doesn't change. So this is Marcus is a Pompeian or Marcus was a Pompeian. My statement remains pretty much the same. I hope you all are following. I hope you all are enjoying. Next statement, please. This is it. All Pompeians were Romans. All Pompeians were Romans. Now, as always, I'll first look at this statement for the proper nouns. When I look at this, I realize that there are no proper nouns as such. Say Pompeians as well as Romans can be uh, can can be proper nouns. So when I analyze this statement, what I understand is I need to say that any instance of class Pompeians is also the instance of class Romans, right? So how do I do this? Now over here we will have an implication involved. Also, not to forget this is this is all. So what this means is for every instance of class Pompeians, we can conclude that that instance is also Roman. This makes a lot of difference to the statements that we write. So the solution here is this one for all x. Something that you've studied earlier. A lot of a lot of times you might have used this in, in discrete mathematics and stuff, right? For all x, Pompeian x implies Roman X. What this means is for all the occurrences of X, if X is a Pompeian, you can always conclude that X is Roman. So suppose suppose if I take an example, if I if I tell my system or if I ask my system that X is a Pompeian, my system will say yes, X is also a Roman. Or if I add name to this X or if I add name to this instance, if I tell my system that Marcus was a Pompeian, my system will conclude and answer me that Marcus is Roman. So this is pretty much the information that the system will use and this is pretty much the conclusion that we need to make out of this information. So you can think on these lines, this left hand side for me is always the information and right hand side is always the inference or that is why we read this as implies. If this is true, it will imply this one. Matlab, Anything that holds true here will hold true here as well. All Pompeians were Romans. Fine. Now, next statement onwards. You'll take down the statement. Try on your own. Get the answer. If you can get it, great. If not, just proceed with the video. And the next slide definitely gives you the answer. But try and write on your own. Not too difficult, right? But we will need practice. Next statement, please. Every gardener likes sun. Now, again, in this particular statement, if I if I look for proper nouns, 
I find son. Son is yes, a proper noun. Gardener, gardener is a predicate. So now I need to establish a relation saying that every gardener, any instance of class gardener will like this object called son. So how do I do this? It comes like this. Observe. Every gardener for all x, for all the instances of class gardener, x likes son. So because son is a proper noun, I've written it like this. So what this implies is whatever I substitute as instance for this class gardener, that same instance will hold true here as well. So if I say, say Marcus is a gardener, if I ask my, if I tell my system Marcus is a gardener, my system replies Marcus likes son. I hope you are understanding where are we using predicates and where do we use proper nouns. Proper nouns have to be treated like this, right? Whereas be it likes or be it gardener, they have to be treated as predicates. How do we read this? X likes sun, right? Okay, next one please. All purple mushrooms are poisonous. Now this is uh, a predicate which I insist that you all write first on your own and then you can come back and look at the solution on the next slide. All purple mushrooms are poisonous. You can pause the video here, write it on your own, two minutes time, come back and see the, the actual answer. Well, the solution is this. For all x, if x is a mushroom and, right, and x is purple, then x is poisonous. So over here, when I look at this, if I tell my system that X is a mushroom and X is purple, my system will conclude that X is poisonous. Now, a lot of times people tend to just merge these two, these two uh, predicates. You, some of you might have written mushroom or purple mushroom, right? You cannot do that because every mushroom is not purple. So mushroom has to be treated as a separate entity. Purple has to be treated as a separate entity or in proper terms, both have to be treated as separate predicates, right? And only when an object uh, uh, holds true for both these both these conditions, only then this can be concluded, right? We'll take one more before we switch over to the next part of the video. Everyone is loyal to someone. Everyone is loyal to someone. Now, something like this becomes a bit trivial for, for, for students because over here, I don't have a name. I don't have a predicate. Now, how, how exactly do I represent this? Now, this is also a funny one. Make sure you write it before you actually come and see the solution that I have on my next slide or as I proceed with the video. Here comes the solution. Everyone is loyal to someone for all X there exists y. Now, please understand this. I cannot put a for all over here because it never said everyone is loyal to everyone. It says for all x, there exists an instance y. For all x, there exists a specific instance y where x is loyal to y. So, just make sure that your quantifiers are always proper. This can't be for all. This is there exists. For all x, there exists y, loyal x comma y. Now, a lot of times I've observed this, that students tend to write this and they, they start writing, say, uh, say man x or maybe human being x or whatever. Now, please understand this. This question never mentioned or this statement never mentioned that we are talking with reference to human beings or we are talking with reference to someone specific, right? This is for any general uh, instance or you can say this is a very general statement. So, you cannot represent X and Y as instances of human or whatever because absolutely nothing is mentioned. Now, in comparison, look at this statement. Everyone loves everyone. Now, from the previous predicate, this statement has gone from someone to everyone. Now, moment I do this, how does my slide look like? Now, look at this. This is what my solution will actually look like. Now, for all x, for all y, loves x comma y. What this means is for any instance x, x loves y. So, over here, the quantifier makes all the difference. Had I put there exists, it would have been similar to my previous uh, previous solution where I said for every instance x, there exists a specific instance y. Over here, the statement clearly says everyone loves everyone. So, for any instance of x, for any instance y, x loves y will always hold true. 
So kindly always read the statements carefully and only then you convert it to predicates. Make sure you do not add any additional information to predicates and also make sure that your quantifiers are right. Right. So at the moment, I'm taking a little break at, uh, uh, at this uh, uh, statement number seven. Right. We'll go to the second part. You can go to the next video. Watch it. We are trying our best to keep the videos as small and as quick as possible for you. But the same thing continues. You need to write it first on your own and then look at the solution. At the moment, thank you for studying at Junk Minds. See you with the next video, the second part of this particular chapter. Thank you as of now.